Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics News Mathics Probability and Statistics video. In this video, I'll be going over how probability functions and statistical modeling can be used both to compose pieces and to quantify our expectations as listeners and what happens when these expectations are disrupted. I'm going to start off by going over the basics of probability in mathematics. A probability function is a function that accepts as input a variable with a specific value and outputs the probability of the variable having that value. As a rule, all the probabilities in a given probability function must sum to one in order for the function to be well defined. A Markov chain is the stochastically produced sequence of random variables transitioning on a state space such that the probability of the next state depends variably on the current state and previous states. In a first-order Markov chain, the probability of the next state depends only on the current state and none before it. In a second-order Markov chain, the probability of the next state depends on the current state and the state directly preceding the current state. You probably get the drift. Computer programs use matrices produced by Markov chains to determine sequences of pitches in melodies. First-order Markov chains tend to produce melodies that sound disjointed and erratic, while higher-order Markov chains produce more coherent-sounding melodies. Perhaps more obvious application of statistical analysis to Western tonal music is simply to count common and uncommon musical events. For example, we could go through a piece of music and count the number of times a five chord is followed immediately by one chord of the same key. Doing a kind of statistical analysis like this would allow us to model musical behaviors with relevant probability functions that predict, given a certain input variable, the next output. You may recognize this concept from probability theory as conditional probability. We could, for example, model the probability of a piece being in a certain key, given in the pitches in the melody, using something called Bayes' rule. Specifically, the probability of a certain key area, given the notes in the melody, is equal to the probability of the given melody in the given key, times the probability of the piece being in that key, all divided by the probability of the given melody occurring altogether. This kind of modeling works for lots of different so-called musical events and can compare within and across genres and by different comp composers or compositional periods. For example, we could ask something like, given I'm listening to Stravinsky, what's the probability that a half cadence will occur after the first 32 bars of a piece? It can help us quantify our expectations as listeners and explain why disruption of varying magnitude to these expectations can shock us. Outside the realm of what we may be used to, in the Western art music tradition, the ideas we've just discussed can help composers create new, completely mathematical compositions. Ioannis Skenakis, a Greek-French composer born in the early 1900s, used stochastic models and processes to generate music completely dependent on the unpredictability of random variables. His compositions helped shape the landscape of classical and electronic music after World War II. In case you're wondering, Stochastic processes are systems that are unpredictable due to the influence of discrete or continuous random variables. In other words, these systems may be statistically analyzed but not predicted accurately. In his compositions, Skinakis used a variety of algorithms and naturally occurring stochastic systems to generate his very unique sounding works. For example, one of Skinakis's 
Cornerstone Electronic Works, called Gendi 3, after the programmer is created by, is completely electronically composed and performed a piece of music that relies on several different levels of randomness. Gendi 3 was written by the program Gendi. This program determines everything about the composition, from timbre and dynamics to macro-architectural schematics. Timbre is the sound of individual instruments, or voices, as we call non-traditional instrumental sounds produced electronically. The timbres of up to 16 individual voices are determined randomly by this program, and then these timbres are randomly adjusted to be more or less disorderly. The general architecture, or macro structure, of the composition is also determined by the program. Each composition can be visualized in two-dimensional Euclidean space with time on the horizontal axis and each individual voice occupying a specific location on the vertical axis. Therefore, the progression of voices over time can be modeled on the two-dimensional plane. Gandhi determines when voices are silent versus when they are sounding at some pitch, and therefore also determines the larger scale compositional timbre throughout specific time segments on the temporal axis. You can get a taste of what a composition produced by this program sounds like by listening to the opening of Gendi 3. Although it might not be immediately apparent when you're listening to this piece, the work is uniformly logically coherent and evolves en masse over time throughout the piece's progression in what the composer describes as an, as an asymptotic evolution towards a stable state. Another of Tsukunaki's pieces, and La Logique A et B, uses the concept of Markov chains, which we discussed earlier, to determine the piece's overall structure. You can look up this piece if you're interested in listening to it. Based on what you've heard in the previous example, you can probably get the idea of what this one sounds like as well. That's all for this video. To see the next video in the Mesomathics series or visit centerofmath.org, click right here on the blackboard. Thank you for watching.